finishing up our semester here with mobile chest and some specialty chest views that you might see at the clinical sites. Portables, you're going to do a fair amount of portables using either the DR portable machine or the CR portable machine. It definitely de um, depends on the patient position, the tube angle of the actual beam. So, when you're going to do a portable chest x-ray, please always introduce yourself and your tech, and then check, check the patient's ID. Check their band, but if, if they're awake, please try and ask them their name and ID. Survey the room. Look for any obstacles that you could crash into, things that might block your portable machine. Um, is there uh, another patient in the room? Are there visitors in the room? Are there tubes? Are there lines that you should stay away from? Always check with nursing staff before moving a patient as their condition may not allow them to move safely. If they've had recent hip surgery, you can't sit them up at a 90 degree angle. They're only allowed to go to a 45 degree angle for so many hours. Ideally on all portable chest x-rays, you want the patient as erect as possible and as straight as possible. Try to take out any pillows that might be underneath the patient. Those will show up as an artifact. Watch the patient's hips. Make sure they're sitting sort of flat on their bottom and that they're not rotated. This will help the chest being more straight on. Supine chest x-ray is considered less diagnostic. The lung fields appear shortened and the heart is magnified and air fluid levels are not seen. So ideally have them upright. Watch for lines and tubing that are connected to the patient when you move them. If your order is asking for a specific tube or line, make sure you ask which one. Um, which one am I looking for? And then you're going to write that on the image itself. So if it's for ET tube, you're going to put ET tube on it so the radiologist knows this is specific for that tube. If the patient can't pull themselves forward, have someone help you pull them forward using the sheet um, and slide the cassette behind the sheet. It's less, pain, pa less painful for the patient's back. Some of the beds, I think a good amount of the beds at the main hospital have these um, x-ray pockets or x-ray sleeves, they'll call it. And you can actually slide the cassette into the, this pocket of the mattress um, that allows for less sort of jabbing into the patient's back. The bed is your friend. So if your tech is looking for the max inflate button, it's usually similar to this or has this sort of static lines next to it. This will inflate the patient's bed to maximum capacity, making it stiffer and a little bit easier to move the patient. They're not sinking into it as much. You're going to utilize the buttons on the side to either raise or lower the head, depending on what you're doing. And then the um, locks on the stretcher work very similar to that as the stretchers I'm sure that you've already sort of come into contact with. We usually green is steer, orange is the brake, and then anytime it's midline here, it's considered neutral. Cassette positioning, you are. I want you to place your right or left marker on the cassette itself under the bag. Why? Because it's super easy to take the plastic bag off and throw it in the trash can and lose your x-ray marker. We've all done it. You'll all do it at some point, and then you're going to have to go back up and look through the trash and find your marker. Once the board is behind the patient, I place my hand on top of the patient's shoulder and try to ensure that my fingertips are not above the top of the cassette where the handle is. Your digital cassettes have an extra handle on top. The cassette does not actually go into the handle. And I'll show you that in our lab as well. Um, and then I put my hands on either side of the patient's chest to see if I have a cassette that's even left to right. Tube angle. Ideally, the straighter up the patient can be the better. If they're straight up, you don't need much angle. The further back you are, the more angle you're going to need. I tend to look at the slope of the patient's sternum, that angle, and I match that tube angle with my x-ray tube. I always look from the side here at both angles, both my tube and the chest. Okay, don't be super particular about central ray. Ideally, it's gonna be the same as PHS and T7. Um, but a lot of the patients may be very difficult. They may be elderly, 
kyphotic, they may have um, pathology going on, they may be post-surgery. So if you're at T6 or you're at, you know, not exactly T7, give yourself a break. Open your collimators so you can see them just above the shoulders. So you're giving your triangle of light, but you don't need to open your collimators so you're including the abdomen. I don't wanna see the light on the wall behind the patient or past their humeral heads, okay? Um, tell the patient that the cassette's gonna be cold, it's gonna be hard, but it won't be there for long and they're usually pretty cooperative if they know it's for a short time. Ask them to try and hold still and not to adjust their positions. They try to scoot down sometimes. Uh, the board is uncomfortable, so they'll lean forward. Let the patient know that you will tell them when to breathe in and hold their breath if they're awake. Ask them to try and not raise their shoulders up when they breathe in. If they take a deep breath in and they throw their shoulders back, usually the clavicles raise, and you don't want the clavicles to raise because then your clavicles end up in your apices, and we call that a lordotic view. If the patient is not conscious, um, if they're unresponsive, you're gonna watch for their breathing. And you're gonna, gonna get on the rotor and wait for that inspiration and, and you're gonna make that exposure, all right? When you're done, I always ask the patient how they would like to be positioned after the x-ray is complete. Do you wanna be sitting up? Do you wanna be laying back down? Put the pillows back where you remove them. Try and return everything that you have moved. The side table, Make sure they have their remote, safety pins if you remove them, if you removed any jewelry or their phones. Make sure it's close to them so that they can reach them. Uh, we have a NICU at the main hospital and there's a portable station there. It's uh, It's been a CR portable for a long, long time, but now we have a DR plate. We were, are using disposable markers only to help prevent any sort of infection. The nurse is gonna lift the baby for you and they will hold during exposures. The technical factors in the NICU are posted on the portable and um, they go by the weight of the baby. The ID bands, the patient ID bands for the baby are taped um, up here by the head of the bed. Wash your hands prior and after, wash the equipment. The shield, it needs to be in a glove and not just placed on the baby. Um, or use the shadow shield method. Necklaces. Um, most of your texts are going to have the, the patient hold the necklace in their mouth um, because if you take it off, you could lose it. So you might see that. They, you might see the necklace taped to their chin to help them hold it in place, um, or you can take it off as long as you remember to put it back on. When you're on the floors, watch for these cardiac monitors. They're tucked in the patient's chest pocket of their hospital gown. If you see these cords coming out, you wanna take this monitor out of their pocket because it makes a big white square on your portable x-ray. Watch out for chest tubes. This, um, this sort of drainage system here is connected to a chest tube. So this patient most likely has a pneumothorax or a hemothorax or something that's going on in their chest where they need to do some drainage, okay? Don't knock it over. A patient, patient on a ventilator, they may be awake. So please speak to them as if they were awake. They could open their eyes at any time, so try not to be alarmed. And then a patient um, like this one here, they have a tracheostomy here. So there may be tubing coming out of this as well. Watch out for cooling or warming blankets. Uh, at the main hospital, they're this blue color that are behind the patient and they have this diamond pattern. Well, this is what it looks like when you take an x-ray of a patient on the cooling blanket. If you see these blue tubes coming out, you have to put your cassette on top of the cooling blanket. You'll only do it once. <laughs> um, some more artifacts. So this patient has a back brace on. I don't know if you're allowed to take that off. You would have to ask. This patient has cough drops in their shirt pocket. This patient has wet hair. And this patient has dreadlocks. Those will show. So wet hair and dreadlocks, you can ask them to try and put it up over their head. If you see this machine at the end of a patient bed in the cardiac unit, do not sit the patient up. This patient has an intra-aortic balloon pump. 
It is going through their femoral artery up into their heart. It's usually in the heart and vascular area. Just a reminder of portable floors. I know we went over this in foundations, um, but I want you to really take notes on these and start to learn these and learn where things are. Repeat. When do you repeat? If the apices are cut off, it may still be acceptable if you're only checking for NG tube placement. If you remember from your tubes and lines homework, the NG tube is a feeding tube that goes into the stomach. If it's just a portable chest, um, not looking for a tube, you need to repeat if you cut off the apices. If the bases are cut off, it potentially is still acceptable if you're only checking for line placement, but most of the time you're going to have to repeat for it. Rotation. On PA chest um, and AP chest are the same, so you're looking to see if the clavicles are not equidistant from the spine. It may be possible to correct um, due to patient condition. So you may need to adjust the patient, rotate the patient's hips, watch the chest, look for any pillows underneath. Underexposure uh, gives you too much noise, not enough technique. So EI numbers should be between 100 and 300. High number is too much, low number not enough, but you're better off with a higher number than a lower number. Insufficient inspiration, you should see at least seven ribs on a portable chest. Um, ideally, your patient that's wide awake, you want to see 10 ribs if they can cooperate with you, but your patient who is not responsive, then they are not able to take a deep breath in and hold it for you. Read your order. Always read the reason why you are doing the exam. That is key. Are they looking for pneumothorax? Are they looking for pleural effusion, which would be fluid? Are they looking for a specific tube? Are they looking for a specific line that I need to make sure and include? Look for the reason on your requisition. Um, this is just an example of the tube angle here, which is where you want it. Ideally, you want it around the third or fourth rib. You want to see the apices clear of the clavicles. This is not enough to, tube angle. This is what we call lordotic chest, and the clavicles are overriding the apices. You can see here. Exit. I was always taught to make sure the patient is back in the same or better condition that you found them. Replace any pillows. I always ask the patient if they need to turn the patient. Some patients need to be turned a certain amount of times a day. So if you've already removed all the pillows, they may want to use that time to turn the patient to the other side. Fix the sheets. Make sure they have their call bell. If they have one, put back the tables, the linen bins. If you raise the bed up uh, to be ergonomic, then I want you to lower it down to the floor. Cons. Portable chest is not preferred basically because it makes the heart look larger. At times it's unable to sit the patient upright to show enough of a true fluid air level. You can expose the other patient in the room depending on how close they are, if you're able to shield them or not. You're unable to obtain a lateral chest x-ray image. And the selection of technical factors can vary from tech to tech. So the patient may have had seven chest x-rays since they were here, but each tech used a little something different or positioned a little bit different. So it's hard to sort of repeat exactly the same thing. You'll get artifacts from lines, pillows, cooling blankets, anything that's in the, um, on the patient floor. 